Hello, 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 everyone. Thank you for tuning in. I am Jay Lee. This is Jelly's Corner. This is Honey D's Girls. It's back, baby. You know, I love it. Anyway, uh, <laughs> um, this is my review for Married, no, Marrying Million Season 2, Episode 2. I told y'all I reviewed Episode 1. Y'all didn't get much in Episode 2 because I don't know who's going to watch this, okay? So this is a test run, okay? Depending on how many people watch, will determine if I review further. Further. Okay, so y'all already know, like, comment, share, subscribe, become a J-Bird, to relax, relate, to release, to inhale, and to exhale, and to center yourself. Boom. Okay. Um, first, I told y'all, quick and in a hurry, um, Bree and Bill. Okay, so now we see they have Bree party. Now, he again, he in his 60s. He's 61, I believe, and she's 21, and she's turning 22. And so, we see her at her birth. Again, I reviewed episode one. Go check that out. So, they're at her birthday party. I did like what she had on. I didn't get a picture of it, but the, it just, for her, it just didn't seem fitted right for her. I didn't understand. It was like a pair of white pants and a white shirt and a colored bedazzled bra. But it just didn't come together for me. Anyway, I'm going to say that. Um, we see how the mama and the, the mom and the ex-wife were meeting up. Because the Bill's ex-wife was there because they keep saying, Oh, they have children. Those kids are probably adults. Stop saying that. Okay. But when he then said, Oh, isn't my ex-wife beautiful? Or isn't she you know, gorgeous or whatever? Well, on the outside is what the mom responded to. So, the mom like, you know, if you say, you know, ugly things to my daughter, I would give that right back to you. So, that's the reason why she was not being too nice. The good old ex-wife Kathleen or whatever. Kathleen, like, oh, you're being rude. That won't get you anywhere. You know what I'm saying? She brings up, a, I'm Bill's first wife. We have three kids together. You know, I married him when he was broke or whatever. I feel sorry that Bree either has a mom like that. I'm like, if you come for a mother, don't come for people's mothers. Bill is saying to Kathleen, his ex-wife, I'm so sorry. I did not know that she was saying something like that. I mean, but your ex-wife was rude to her daughter. It just shows us the differences between the people of it all or whatnot. So, Bree, like, you know, Mom, this wasn't the place to say that. You know, you should not have said that, Mom. I'm saying, you were wrong, Mom. You were wrong. I would not have told Mama shit. I would have giggled a little bit and said, Mom, let's don't do that next time. But it's kind of funny. Anyway, so she's like, I'm going to be with Bill. You know what I'm saying? His ex-wife going to be around or whatever. So, you know, so please just be nice. I'm not being nice to anyone who's not being nice to me. I'm not going to go out my way and be mean to them. But if my mama says something mean, that's not even really mean. It's just like, well, she not, because she's not pretty on the inside and she's fucking with my daughter. Okay, anyway, breathing goes to Kathleen trying to apologize on her mother's behalf. I'm like, mm, mm, mm. Whatever you can do for the money, okay? My thing would have been, fuck that Fuck Kathleen. Because, again, we know that Kathleen was supposedly, allegedly rude to Brie in season one. I didn't see season one. Don't need to see it. Okay. Anyway, Kathleen says to Brie, as she's like, you know, my mom, you know, she just, she didn't say that or whatever. That was team too much. Kathleen, like, you know, I get it. You know what I'm saying? I can be intimidating. And, you know, when people say stuff like that, it's really more about them than me. Brie was like... No, no, like, my mom was not at all intimidated, like, not at the all, okay? And at the end of the day, she's my mother, okay? And she was defending me the same way you would defend your daughters because you're their mom, right? Well, you know, it doesn't matter because I will probably never see your mom again. So, she doesn't really mean anything, you know, to me in my life. So, who cares? Well, no, you will see her again because I will be with Bill and she's my mom. So, she will be around. And I'm like, girl, I'm not sitting at my birthday party having any kind of conversation with my old ass boyfriend's ex-wife about my mama. Ain't happening. Not on my watch. So the following day after the party, the house is a mess. But it's a mansion. Who cares? Let the maids clean it up or whatever. Bill and Bree have a conversation in the room or whatever. To where, you know, Bree brings up how, you know, um, 
it was kind of crazy what happened last night. Bill then says, well, your, your mom was out of line. You know, she was out of line or whatever. Kathleen coming to the party was a big thing for her. Like, she came and that was really big of her. I'm like, why are you defending your ex-wife to your new girlfriend? I don't, I don't get it. As if you didn't know your ex-wife was rude last season. We're going to let that be or whatnot. You know what I'm saying? Bree said, well, it wasn't right, but she was defending me. And let's not forget, Kathleen has said many rude things to me before. She even said last night how she would not see my mama no more as if my mama won't be around. Okay? Well, I'm going to call Kathleen and check on her because I think she's a victim. And I want to be one big happy family. I'm like, look, at the end of the day... Fuck Kathleen. Fuck Bill. Because Bill is so concerned with Kathleen. I'm like, you're not with Kathleen. And I get you want to have respect for your children's mother. Your children's mom is a fucking adult. She don't need to be at your new girlfriend's party. Who is 21? Well, 22. And it is not a thing where, okay, I think an ex-wife and a husband should be beefing. But y'all can have separate lives. Okay? She don't need to be around you. In her, cause she seems a bit salty. Anyway, that's what it was for Bill and Bree, honey. I don't. I'm not gonna go back and watch season one, but I say Bill is on some bullshit. Okay. Next up, we have Katie, who was 23, and Kevin, who was 30. Katie is a part-time model. I'm like, how are you a part-time model? What else do you do if you're not modeling, okay? And Kevin is a tech entrepreneur, okay? He allegedly is also like a YouTube person that would not. Like, not right now, but like he was, you know, whatever. So, she brings up how, you know, my family is so diverse. I said, are you sure? And like, you don't have black folks that ain't diverse. And lo and behold, it was black people or family. So, she's adopted. Her parents adopted, um like five kids you know her parents had like one biological son and they then adopted five kids and two or three of those kids were black so again it was a very diverse family okay um so she rings up how um she was close with her parents when she was younger and everything and whatnot they had a regular ass life and whatnot you know what I'm saying but then her mom passed away from pancreatic cancer when she was 15, no, 16 and so that was really hard time for her but she was happy to have her best friend during that time boom so she doesn't really have a job okay she's like i was a bottle girl it was like a little bullshit and stuff or whatever but i want to be able to have a job where I make lots of money. And my boyfriend, Kevin, is going to help. Is it that, Kevin? It is. Y'all know I make a man, so I have to be sure I'm not making up stuff too early. So, her boyfriend going to try to help her get more financially stable to be able to make, you know, a substantial amount of money because he's a millionaire, okay? Now, she says, he's the love of my life. I love him so much. Now, her best friend feel like, you know what I'm saying, Kevin can show you more love, okay? He can do more because he's been dating you for nine months and he ain't spent not enough money. He ain't spent not enough he hasn't spent enough money on you considering how much money he has and how broke you are. I do feel like nine months of consistent dating is a long enough time to where if you're a millionaire, your girlfriend shouldn't be struggling. Like, she should not. It should, it, it just should not be. Nine months? Nine? Girl, bye. Okay? Because a friend said he has all that money, but he don't use any of it on you to show you he care. I also feel like he can't buy her love. Like, I'm not saying he should buy her love, but if she ain't got no groceries, I mean, he should get her some food. Okay? Anyway, Kevin, who's the rich one, he's a software developer. He was also on YouTube. He does these seminars. He teaches people how to create software. It's a, that's a very lucrative job. Now, he says his net worth is 40 to 50 million. I need to go. I, I, I want to know if that's true. 40 to 50 million? Anyway, um, because he like he wears shirts that says "unemployed," was the unemployed engine? It was something. The night I thought the shirt was cute. Anyway, he rings about. I have a house, you know, here on the beach that I had made or whatever. I have one other house in Vegas and whatnot. And I don't spend the money on on silly things. I'm saying, I mean, I'm not a flashy person at all, except my Lamborghini. If you have a Lamborghini, you're flashy. Period. You may not be, you know, I got to sneeze, I think. Did I got to sneeze? I may sneeze. 
I got to sneeze. It won't come out. And I'm not cutting this out. Anyway, but again, he brings about, you know, he does not spend his money on frivolous silly things, but he has the Lamborghini in two houses. If you are, a, if you, if your net worth is 40 or 50 million and those are your only expensive purchases, he's, yeah, I would say he's, he's frugal because for him not to say, I got, you know, but he could have, you know, sent thousands of pairs of gym shoes and thousands of clothes, but you know, the clothes may cost ten dollars who knows? So he brings about, he didn't come for money at all or whatever. And so his parents always instilled in him to play it safe when it comes to money, don't assume that it'll always be there. But if you have forty million and you're not spending it, you can spend it a little bit, just a little bit. Like you don't have to like hoard it all, okay? But he's extra cautious about who he dates because they can be with him only for his money, and he don't want that, okay? Now, we also see he brings up how he met her. Now, he was at a conference he was hosting, because, again, he does hosting gigs all over the country or whatever. And she brings up how I was following him on YouTube, and then I was broke. I was broke, 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 broke. But I sold my camera to get a ticket to get to one of his events. He then say, and I then saw her because security was stopping her from getting in the event. And I'm like, who is this gorgeous girl, you know, getting stopped by security? It was her. And she was like, the first week we hung out, I kept Googling, like, you know, can you fall in love? You know, in a week, I'm looking like, girl, you put it on a little bit too thick or whatever. And so they go on a little date. And since she meet them at the little restaurant, we put up his Lamborghini and everything. And he like, oh, what'd you do today? Oh, nothing. I was, you know, laying around or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Basically not being too productive if she wants to have this ultra rich lifestyle and make all this money or whatever. He like, I just wish she can kind of focus a little bit more to get to a point to where she is like, you know, doing something with her life or whatnot. And then, you know, I just wish she was more determined to create something for herself, is what he said. And then, so they had the little chat. Because it's the thing to where she said he's trying to help me get on the path to make money. People who do these seminars to say, oh, this is how you can make money here and there. I mean, is she her, like, is he her, like, advisor and not really her boyfriend? Because, again, if she's struggling and you were at $40 million, how have you not, like, put her put in the game, coach? But, again, she seems like she just wants him to, hey, maybe she wants him to handle stuff and not, like, she wants him to give her fish and maybe not teach her how to fish. That's what I'm thinking it was. So, they have dinner. And then he says, so, you want to split the check? I said, what? What? What do you, what do you just ask her? When he said, do you want to split the check? I said, you gotta be joking. You are worth 50 million. She's poor. You can't pay for dinner. And she's like, are you are you serious? He's like, you know how I feel about this. I feel that people should contribute equally in relationships and that includes financially. I said, but you are a multi millionaire and she's struggling to even be a bottle girl. I was like, I cannot believe it. And she was like, but you can clearly afford the dinner. And you know I'm like struggling. So like, why would you? He said, I still think we should split it. And you know, I won't be anyone's bank. And she has to give him her card so they can both pay. Look, any man, I feel like I get that you want it to be 50-50. I get that. I get that no one always wants to be the one picking up the check. I feel like it's something different for a man to know the person he's dating is less fortunate than him. And he's $40 million more fortunate than her. And he's having a fucking hissy fit saying that she should pay for dinner. No. I get if y'all live together and, and you want her to pay the cable bill, you may pay all the other bills, like you have to contribute. But you made her pay for half of her, girl. What's the point? We wouldn't have went out. Nope. Mm -mm, no. No. I would not date a man who is one million times more rich than me and he still wants me to pay for dinner because things should be 50. No, motherfucker, no. It, we're not equal because of your bank account. We're not equal at all. I was pissed. I was like, the fuck? Break up with him. And I get he doesn't want anyone to be with him for his money. But if you can't pay for our dinner dates, I don't want to be with you. 
I don't want to be with you, you asshole. Next up, we have Erica and Rick. Oh, God. Oh, God. Erica is 23. Rick is 68. Yes. He is 45 years older than her. Um, Erica is an influencer, which means she just posts stuff on Instagram. And Rick is a retired millionaire. Okay, I'm like, I just, girl... 23 and six, Hugh Hefner. Hugh Hefner. Okay. So she brings about like, where her parents are, whatever, how amazing her dad is, and how no one could ever compare to her dad until she met Rick. Rick is 18 years older than her father. She's dating someone who's old enough to be her grandfather. Okay. Anyway, you know, she brings up how they met on social media because he messaged her one time and he, you know, he messaged her first and said, you know, hey, you know, you're hot. Come live with me on my yacht. I said, he was turning around. He's a rapper. He's a rapper. Anyway, so, and now she lives with him in Florida on his yacht. I, but she brings about, I've always liked older men. As I turned like 18 years old and I've always liked older men or whatever. Her dad like, you know, so there were no like men around your age. I'm saying, oh, why not even start dating a man who's 30? Like, why you go from, you know, zero to a thousand? Okay, because 68 is a lot. That's not, look, look. Older to me is like, you know, between 10, 15 years, even maybe 20, depending on how old the person is. If you're 23, you should not be dating someone that's 45 years older than you. He gon' look. It's just, it's just different. It's just, I, you want the money. He's a millionaire, but I digress. So she brings about, well, you know, dad, younger guys, they, they don't get it. They're stressed about money. And no, no, she, yeah, they're stressed about money. They don't know how to do things sexually. It was just, all, they're, they're not as good in bed. I'm like, I, I would not sit and have that conversation with my dad. May he rest in peace. But I would have done that when my dad was alive. Um, because I just feel like to say what well, younger guys stress about bills, so do older people. Like, I mean, he don't because he rich. But I, it, it's just stupid. And the producers say, you know, you you think Rick just the one? Well, like, if he asked me to marry him, I would say yes. I mean, he's the one bank account she wants. I digress. We see Rick, who says, I am almost the magic number. I'm almost 69. <laughs> I'm like, uh, uh, uh. No, I don't want old people joking about, you know, eating the vagina and sucking dick. I just, I, at 68, you should not be doing 69. Mm-mm. You just shouldn't. I just, I mean, I just don't know. Don't do 69 and 68. Anyway, he brings up how he, his family came for money because back in the day, either the great grandparents or whoever owned a jewelry store and they just have always had jewelry stores over the years. Again, he comes for money, whatever. He's so rich. They said, so what's your net worth? He was like, I have no idea. <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm wealthy. I'm rich. You know, I, I have a four bedroom, you know, four bed bathroom yacht. I have antique cars. I have five Porsches. He's like, I, I'm rich. I don't, I don't count my money. My money counts me. But it's not smart because you always want to be aware of how much you have left. Okay? Because if you are rich, you keep spending, like, you want to be sure that you're not going over the top. Because five Porsches, antique cars, and a goddamn huge ass boat. You, are you sure you still got millions? Because the upkeep of all that stuff is expensive. Anyway, he also said that people call him BDR. <sighs> For Big Dick Rick. Oh, God. I, I can't. I can't. Yeah. Anyway. So, he brings why he was married for uh, nine years. Nine or ten years or whatever. And he got divorced and never wanted to get married again. Never wanted to get married again. Until he met Erica. Okay, and the friends, like, you know, do you think she's only with you for your money? You're like, well, what do you think? I'm like, I think, yeah. She may like you, but I'm looking like, do she give him head? Oh, God, I don't want to know. Anyway, but she might, because he said he likes to sit down. So, girl, that's a, a feat within itself. Anyway, he said, but I, I still think she loves me. You know what I'm saying? Then we see that he goes into town to meet her, her dad. And I can't wait to see how that goes. Because they was in the bed chit-chatting about it, but I wasn't listening. I'm looking like, I need to know what the dad going to say when they beat up. And then lastly, 
we have Rodney and Desiree, who I still feel like, okay, I guess they're a whole couple of would not be going to let it be. So, you know, she still is a whole secret. Secret lovers. That's what they are. Okay. But she like, I'm going to still be here and enjoy this nice ass lake house because it is what it is. I don't want to sit and enjoy a man's lake house who can't tell nobody about me. I'm not a hooker. No. And it's one thing if that's what you do like in the beginning stages. Not two years in. No one should be a secret in a relationship two years in. That's just team too much or whatever. Now he brings up how I didn't sleep too well because you know what I'm saying we didn't have sex. Because you know we had this sexual chemistry you know what I'm saying. But we've never had like penis and vagina sex. I'm like oh but they've done other stuff. Okay, not say his penis has not been in other places. I'm like that. If you again, if you sucking dick or eating cooch, just have sex. Okay, okay. Now if it's just hand stuff, you know you can do hand stuff. Ain't no big deal. But if you do anything mouth wise, just go ahead and have sex. Anyway, she t- look. I we need to get married before we have sex. You know that. That's my rule. I'm like okay. Anyway, like okay. You know, we can we can get married. That, that can happen or whatever. But I need you to move here for this. So, this is their issue. He wants her to move there. She does not want to move there until he tells his family and her friends about her. And, again, he, I don't want to do that because I, it's, it's a back and forth bullshit that's stupid. Okay? Again, the whole episode, they said 18 different times, I want us to get married. I need you to move here. I don't want to move here until we get married. Well, I don't want to get I'm like... It's a goddamn merry-go-round, okay? So, again, he tells her, you can meet my assistant. You can meet my assistant, and that's what's going to be or whatever. So, you know, he also brings up, like, I love you. you know, I, I love you as a person or whatever. And if we get married, I want it to be a clear understanding that this is where we're going to live at. You know what I'm saying? And that's why I want you to move here. That's a valid point, but I don't think she going to want y'all to get married. And she gonna, when she wants you to move to her little ass apartment in L.A., Dumb, okay, but I'm like I don't care. Tell me, I want to be sure that she not with you for my money. She been dating you. She been dating you for two years. You pay her rent. At this point, it don't matter. If you don't know after two years, leave them anyway. So we see that you know she meets the assistant whose name is Alicia, whatever. And there's the reason for like Alicia don't come because she's not a person in his life like that. You know what I'm saying? She's the assistant. Like, I need a real family member, a cousin, an aunt, a, a great uncle, someone. Okay? Now, the assistant, like, you know, I'm just, you know, she's beautiful, but I wouldn't expect anything less from who he know Roddy dates or whatever. But, you know what I'm saying? He, she has a lot to gain from dating him. And based on his lifestyle, I feel like, you know what I'm saying, you know, he got to be careful. You know what I'm saying? Because you never know. And so, Desiree asked, like, do you know any of his friends? She says, yeah, I know all of his friends. You know? But Rodney's also a very private person. You know what I'm saying? Rodney brings about, you know, they're still trying to make sure that she's here for the right reasons. At this point, I would leave. Because you're trying to make it seem as if I'm a gold digger. I don't dig no gold, man. Anyway, so Desiree brings up how even though it's crazy, it's crazy that she thinks about the fact that he doesn't even post her on his social media and everything. And why would I even move here if he won't even acknowledge me? Like, what's the point? The assistant Alicia then say, well, you know, we post social media stuff for, like, uh, you know, publicity for the business. But, like, he doesn't really post personal life stuff. You know what I'm saying? And, and why would he post his flavor of the week, you know, if you won't even move? I'm looking like, flavor of the week? And then she's like, you know, you probably should just move here and get your own place and not worry about living with him. And y'all can then see if y'all work, you know, in the same state or whatever. And so, I'm like, first of all, that's reason to say, well, okay, Rodney, if I move here and get a own place, would you pay the rent? Alicia, oh, see, now nah, she doing too much, whatever. She looking for a pot of gold at in her rain. Well, I'm looking like, first of all, he's already paying her bills in L.A. Ain't no big deal or whatnot. You know what I'm saying? Roddy Vance, like, you know, look, you know, oh, you want your bills paid and you want to be my friend? Like, that's too much. How the fuck is that to... Anyone who's this adamant that he doesn't want people to know about you, what is the point of you being with them? I don't get it. I'm like, you know, it's just, d- I want you to move. I, I just want you to move here, period. I'm like, I'm not, bitch, your family don't, no one knows me here. You could murder me and no one would know. 
No, thank you, whatever. So we then see after that little uh, assistant meeting or whatnot, um, Desiree is in her room packing. She finna go. I am leaving. I'm leaving. On that midnight train. Enjoy. Oh, girl, I'm, I'm really getting giddy. I was 4 a.m. So he tried to say, you know, what you gonna do that for? What you leaving for? You know what I'm saying? You met my assistant. He like, she said, you know, you tried to manipulate me to have me meet her as a, you know, this is shut me up. And I don't like that. It's just dumb. I want to meet the people in your life. And if you, for you not to do that, I'm done. I'm leaving or whatever. And, you know, he then say, well, you trying to fast track things. And I'm not in a rush. We need to take baby steps. Two years? Ain't no, even a, a two-year-old baby can run. Babies ain't even babies helping that too. Leave that shit be. And she's like, you know, it's been two years. Now. You, this is unreal. You feel like I'm rushing you two years into the relationship. That's stupid. I'm leaving. I'm out. I ain't coming back unless you really introduce me to your family, your friends, or whatever. You know, you won't keep making me look like a fool. You make me feel like shit. And I'm done. And she packs her bags and leaves like this motherfucker. I can't believe this motherfucker. I'm like, oh, she's upset. Packing and cussing and walking like, girl, and she then left. He like, oh, she tripping. No, you tripping. But she, girl, I would not still have, look, I would not have came to the lake house um, knowing he don't respect me. Not on my watch. Anyway, that's it. The end of the episode. Again, if y'all watch these reviews, I'll keep reviewing. Otherwise, y'all only get two videos. Peace.